Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to yet another edition of Doom Mod Madness. This time around, we are checking out a gameplay mod by the name of La Taylor Girl. A mod where it's not just the weapons that will help you take down your enemies, it's also the clothing that you wear. To begin with, we've got the default loadout here, which includes a reasonably effective pistol and one hell of a killer kick. Seriously. That is some wonderfully messy stuff. And yes, I am of course using the ketchup gore add-on here for that wonderful bit of splatter. But what makes this mod really interesting is that the melee option here actually changes depending on what outfit you have. Even better, it seems to augment the weapons and the way they fire in certain cases too. So it's certainly a mod where experimentation with different fashions will definitely yield interesting results. In terms of the weapons that we've already acquired here, we've seen the pistol in action, and we've also seen a bit of the shotgun replacement here, which has been retooled as a plasma weapon with a force kickback alt, which is quite interesting. We've also got the pulse rifle, full description, the generic pulse rifle, and it's got quite a meaty sounding primary, but a very satisfying secondary, which actually homes in on enemies if it's left spinning long enough out in the open. But as I said earlier, things get really interesting here when you start looking at the alternate outfits. The first of which should be up at the top of this lift here. We're just going to get rid of this imp. And here we have it, a maid outfit. But we can't wear it yet. We've got to do something very, very important. We're going to have to strip. And I've bound a key for that. Whoops. Please no ban, YouTube. Please no ban. But then we can quickly cover our shame. And we get some nifty abilities as a result. In this case, scrap packages, which double for health here, also refill ammo. You can throw these... Cards? Charms? The things that are throwable and sharp. I guess they're effective either way. Alt fire also throws a bunch of them. And occasionally, if you deal enough damage, you also deploy a Roomba. You heard me. What does the Roomba do? I don't know. I, I seriously don't know. All I know is that occasionally a Roomba turns up and I couldn't tell you if it damages enemies or hoovers up items for you. But it's a Roomba. Hooray for Roomba. You know one thing it really could do, however? Clean up all the gore. Especially when you're using ketchup or brutal doom. But anyway, we've got another outfit. It's a bunny girl outfit. And much like before, we're going to have to get naked if we want to put it on. Anyway, let's find out what attributes. Plus 20 speed, weak to melee, easy to repair. Hit scans can what? Hit scans and what? I'm pretty sure that said hit scans can carrot sometimes, as in the vegetable. But I'm not sure because it goes past too quick for me to actually read it coherently. So yeah, one improvement that could certainly be made here. Outfit descriptions could either stay on screen for a longer duration or have some ability to be called up at a button press because uh, inquiring minds want to know. Turns out I was bang on the money when it comes to carrots. Good grief. I mean, what are they putting in the soil for these things? These are some genetically enhanced vegetable based death dealers here. It has to be because even the pistol is allowing me to paint the walls, the ceilings and the floors red. And it's just ridiculously entertaining as a result. I mean, we're only, what, three outfits deep into La Taylor Girl right now? We've had the default Tomb Raider-ish outfit, the maid outfit, and now this, the bunny girl outfit, and I'm pretty sure there's many, many more to come. We haven't even gotten to the rest of the weapons yet, and I'm already in my happy place. Good times. You want to dress up as a shinobi with gigantic breasts? You can do that here. You can be the shinobi. You can throw throwing stars into Kakademon's eyes, and you know what? Just to seal the deal, you can turn temporarily invisible when you're hit by enemies. Not that I've found a decent way to utilize that, because I'm usually too busy trying to shoot everything in the face so they instantly know where I am, but all the same, you can be a shinobi. As you've no doubt noticed, we've also got a new addition to the weapon roster here, the good old Rowkid Launcher, and this is pretty straightforward, save for the alt fire, which is also altered by the outfit you're currently wearing. So if I was wearing the bunny girl outfit, the alt fire wouldn't be the spinny, fiery discs of death that you may have just spotted there coming out of the rocket launcher. It's an impressive, seriously impressive amount of variation to have across outfits and weapons. It's, it's dizzying to think about. And the potential, the potential is dizzying to think about as well. 
Just think, future iterations of this could just introduce more outfits, more special abilities, more spins on pre-existing weapons that do interesting things, and... It's good. Nah, scratch that. It's friggin' fantastic. So in terms of where the possible inspiration for this came from, I'm sure if any of you have watched Kill the Kill, it should be kind of obvious, especially with this particular piece of clothing here, which just turns you into a death-dealing rage monster that can carve through enemies like a hot knife through butter. And I can't deny, the effect here is seriously satisfying. It feels like it's got a ridiculous sense of velocity behind each hit, and just... My bloodlust, it overfloweth. And as you can imagine, this is a limited use item. This is something that you you don't get to keep for the rest of the playthrough, and for good reason. It would completely unbalance everything. That said, you could probably introduce a few things that would allow its use on a more regular basis as a, as a standard outfit. Maybe you'd have to supply it with a certain quantity of blood harvested from your fallen enemies to trigger it, and eh, there's potential there. Uh, but, as it stands right now, it works perfectly fine as a completely overpowered, ridiculous as hell reference to Kill the Kill. But yeah, this is a mod that is just stuffed to the gills with cool shit, and I've had to be a bit cheeky, typed in a few cheats here and there just so I can cover as much of it as I possibly can. This weapon right here, for example, is the Super Shotgun Replacement, which looks suspiciously familiar to the Flat Cannon weapon out of Vulcan that I played a while back. This is the Cool Gun. Can you guess what it does? I'll give you a few moments. I know it's a I know it's a tough one. It's not immediately obvious, but if you look closely, you'll be able to detect a distinct freezing effect on some enemies there, and then they explode, which is always nice. This one we've met before. Nothing really different here. There's a few subtle alterations depending on what outfit you were, but this one still has the standard homing projectile, which has a actually pretty generous rate of fire, all things considered. We've got the rocket launcher here, which comes with a Mancubus Fireball Alt in standard mode. That does change depending on the outfit. And we've got a standard rocket launcher, which kind of sucks. I never use it. We've also got a rapid fire Sparky Daka style gun. It's actually quite satisfying, don't mind that at all. And we've got the old Orb of Death here. I don't know what the actual name of this is, but it is a certifiable Ball of Death because, <laughs> good grief, is that a wonderful alt fire. Seriously, get yourself in a room full of enemies, trigger that alt, and just watch them explode. Everything, and I mean everything, eat shit when you're wielding that thing. But guess what? We're not done. We're not done, and that's because of this weapon right here. Quite possibly the most interesting weapon, in my opinion, in La Taylor Girl. Just for the fact that every single outfit in this mod affects this weapon directly, in fairly distinctive visual ways. I mean, at the end of the day, it's gonna make everything die. That is the core purpose of the BFG replacement. It's got a pretty nice alt fire, and, you know, so far so standard, but when you put on a new outfit, very interesting things start to happen. For example, the alt on this, rapid fire water attack, which really mashes up enemies good and proper, but I'm just gonna get myself some extra ammo here. Fire the primary, and you summon a water spurt right in the middle of the arena. It's a very, very surprising effect. And, honestly, it just makes you want to try every single outfit out. And the only, the only barrier to that is that the outfits alternate on a bit of a randomized basis. So, you're going to have to do a fair few playthroughs, I believe, before you're going to get absolutely everything covered. And that's no bad thing, because it's already a joy to play. And just in case you were wondering, yes, the bunny outfit does make the BFG fire carrots. You're welcome. So, would I recommend La Taylor Girl? I don't know, it's a close one, but I think I'm gonna have to say yes. I mean, just to put it all in perspective, my character is currently dressed as a schoolgirl, fires a giant fuck-off laser from the BFG, and the alt fire is currently spraying revenants with panties. Just gonna let that settle in for a moment. My BFG is firing panties at revenants. Basically, if you're not interested in giving La Taylor Girl a will for yourself by this point, then you're probably dead inside. Just gonna throw that out there. And if you're not dead inside, the link, as usual, is in the description below. 
I sincerely hope you have as much, if not more fun, than I had picking my way through this wonderful, ridiculous mod. And as much as I would have loved to have covered every single facet of La Taylor Girl in this video, I'm happy leaving a little bit of it to your imaginations. There's still a few surprises here for you to find, and who knows, there's a high chance that I'll end up live streaming this at some point in the future. Until then, I'd like to say a great big thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Thank you very much for your contributions and helping to make this series possible. If you're interested in lending a hand, the link to my Patreon can be found below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments below, and feel free to suggest any mod you'd like to see me cover in future episodes of Doom Mod Madness. This has been Mr. Icarus, thank you very much for watching, Icarus out.